In this video, I give you 10 tips to street camping in an urban area. Stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in today. Really appreciate that. My name is Scott. I'm your host. Welcome to Go Small to Live Large. A YouTube channel dedicated to the Class B RV lifestyle. That is my rig. That is a 2019 Winnebago Travato GL. Uh, I've been living in this van for nearly two years now. February 2019 went full time in that rig. Currently, I'm recording this video in mid November 2020. I want to give you 10 tips to street camping, urban camping, as I call it, because this is how I roll as an RVer. I'm not the one that goes parks in, in a national park in complete wilderness for days on end, I like to explore the urban environment. So I'm kind of an urban cowboy. Today, we're gonna to give you 10 specific things you can take to your street camping, urban camping environment experience and make that better for you. Tip number one is choosing a parking spot. Here's what I found to be the best practice and that is to pick a cool neighborhood main drag. This is 12th Avenue South in Nashville. A really funky little neighborhood. So last night, 9, 8 p.m., this was pretty busy. Lots of foot traffic, lots of street traffic, and lots of bars and restaurants and shops open. You don't want to park on this kind of a street because too much traffic and a lot of noise, you're not going to sleep well. So what I do is I sleep on a side street, pick a side street to park on so I have access to all the activity, right? But I can park here and be in comfort with um, way less noise. People will park around me, but usually by midnight that is gone and this is what I'm left with is my rig by myself. Tip, don't park in front of somebody's house. This is a church building and that is not gonna bring any concern to people, but if you park in front of somebody's house like down here, um, a strange vehicle like this parked in front of house brings attention you probably don't want. Tip number two is position of the rig. Positioning the rig is really important. What I'd like to do is put the back end of the rig with a light above so that the glare from the light allows folks not to see inside. One person could park behind me, that's okay. Um, and then I'd like to orient the rig so that there is a light on the front of the rig to illuminate the cab so that people can see clearly that there is nobody inside, that it looks like a empty car. Very important, you don't want to call attention to yourself by looking like this is an RV with somebody living in it. Also positioning the vehicle, you want to make sure that you have a relatively flat um, parking area, parking spot. This one has a slight uh, incline, meaning that this is higher than the front of the rig, and that's okay because that allows you to sleep better. Um, what you don't want to do is be at a big incline like that because that's not good and you want to make sure that the steepness of the curb is relatively flat. All right, jumped inside the rig because I want to show you a few things in here. Tip number three is to cover the windows correctly. Let me show you. So what I like to do is cover the patio door, sliding door, and the street side window. You see that? Yeah, that's better. <laughs> and leave the cabs open. The reason, again, you want to do this is because if this is all covered up up here, you're going to look like somebody's living in a van and you don't want that attention to yourself. Now for the Travato G floor plan owners, this is easy because this, um, with this configuration, you can't see the bedroom from the outside. UK owners are going to have some challenge there because your bedroom is like right here but you can probably still get away with it. Certainly if you hang a curtain across the uh, front of the cab, which a lot of folks do, I do not. And then looking toward here, I usually leave this open. I have a bug screen down just to give a little bit of muddled look to it. And then I do close the bedroom shade and the back shade. And then the pillow I put, I don't use the secondary shade. I just use a pillow so that I can quickly see what's going on. You can see my bike there. Um, so I don't have to fuss with a secondary shade. That's how I do that. So is this making sense to you? You getting any tips? If you are, give it a thumb up. Comment below. Have you street camped? Are you afraid of it? Um, if you have done it before, what have, what have you, your results been like? And if you haven't tried it, why not? Um, I think it's a great way to explore a neighborhood in the evening and then kind of go to bed in the same neighborhood in a safe manner 
and then wake up kind of refreshed and ready to go for the next morning. And if you like this kind of information, consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, we're all about the uh, van life, RV lifestyle, and uh, it's been honored to have you part of the success of this channel. Let's keep going. Yes, sir. Tip number four is to dress for a surprise. I would not want to be in my birthday suit if you get the gratuitous knock on the door. Uh, so I wear like sport pants if it's cold, shirtless shorts if it's uh, warm, and a t-shirt. And I have my shoes ready to go at the patio door in case I need to uh, see what's going on outside based on a knock on the door. That <laughs> um, I'm able to get my shoes on flip-flops in this case to identify what is going on outside. Next tip is you're going to want to expect noise during the earlier part of the evening but silence as the night wears on. So again this was pretty busy last night. A person parked here, a person parked in front of me. This was a valet lot um, and uh, it, lots of folks moving about on the street here but as the 11 p.m. hour arrived, and certainly in the early morning hours of like midnight, one, two, three, four, uh, now it's about 5 a.m., um, it's pretty quiet, right? And uh, so again, the tip here is to expect some noise, but that will wane as the night wears on, and that's that's okay. You'll sleep really night nice um, in the wee hours, you know, throughout the night um, until the morning when the traffic starts to spin up a little around, a little bit like around 6 a.m. probably. I think we're up to tip number six and that is to explore the neighborhood. That's the whole reason you're here. My advice here is, is to go easy on the food and drink so you can sample things along the way. If you eat a heavy meal at your first, heavy meal at your first stop, you're kind of gonna wanna go to bed and it might only be 7 p.m. and you kind of miss out on some of the other stuff. So rig being here, um, again, this is the front of this church. Is that amazing? Uh, the street was really alive last night and I didn't get much video of that. Well, any really. Um, a lot of bars and such going on up here. The point being is to explore the neighborhood. Tip number seven is don't overindulge though. What if you get kind of loaded up and on the booze and I've done this before and you're so tired and you're so kind of filled up on the, on the adult beverage that you kind of literally pass out in the rig and if there is an issue, you may not respond appropriately or as quickly as one would want. So my advice there is you just want to kind of go easy so you don't be in a you know, coma in your rig in case there is an issue and you need to uh, respond to it or uh, in a quickness drive away. So tip number eight is watch for parking signs and read those very carefully. Let me show you. Now this particular neighborhood has no parking restriction signs at all, which is pretty amazing. Again, side streets are really good for that. Main drags, lots of parking restrictions. Some of these side streets down uh, a few uh, streets earlier had permit only, residential permit only parking. So if there are street signs out here, you really want to look at those very carefully, read very carefully, and then um, obey the signs. You don't want, again, problems, tickets, or otherwise. Let me give you a bonus tip here. So often what I like to do is check with a valet person or a, uh, a server, whether it's food or a beverage, uh, to see about safety of the area, okay to park overnight, and any tips or, or recommendations from them, places to go while I'm on the street. This was kind of cool, parking next to the city valet guy, because I talked with him um, as he was uh, coming out after he parked a car to say, hey dude, what's the story on the parking in this area? Uh, is it okay for me basically to park overnight right here? He's like, yeah, that's no problem. People do it all the time. Perfect. Just validating with the locals as to the current situation. So this is tip number nine, and my tip number nine is both for generator uh, equipped rigs and Volta equipped rigs. Clearly my rig is sitting here. I have a Volta system, which means I have a very large lithium ion energy pack. And um, the tip for Volta owners, Pure 3 lithium ion owners, is you'll want to arrive with a good state of charge and do not, if you can, set auto start to go off because you will create a situation where you are drawing attention to yourself by an engine running in what's seen as an empty vehicle and i'm pretty sure that's going to capture some attention you don't want generator equipped rvs my tip goes don't run the generator for the same reasons it brings attention to yourself 
that you don't want. Um, so for generator folks, you probably would just have to run off battery power for the night. And if that means running the AC, probably not a good place to do that because again, you're gonna call attention to yourself. You don't want. All right, hope you're getting something out of it. <laughs> Got up early to share this with you. And uh, do I go back to bed or not? I don't know, probably stay up. So uh, my 10th and final tip, and then I'm gonna give you an extra bonus uh, here at the very end. My 10th tip is to create a little light inside so that you're not you know, flustered with uh, headlights flashing around you. Let me explain. Luke, what do you think of early morning recording, Luke? Luke? Mm. Let's go outside. Okay, so here's my tip in here. I'm going to turn off this light above the galley so that you can see that I have my reading light on the blue mode. And I've actually modified mine a little bit with some duct tape around the edges, right? And then a little bit with the, um, on the a gauze type material on the front to lessen the brightness of that reading light. So I'm going to just turn this off, give the camera a minute to adjust. And you can see that there is a dim blue glow in the bedroom and that is good. And the reason that I set this, and this is maybe controversial and some of you may not sleep well with this, but uh, the uh, SOC gauge creates quite a bit of green light in the front and you can see the light coming through the cab. I have discovered that when headlights are coming at me this way, as, you know, cars and what have you, or they're turning the corner, it creates flashes inside the rig. And if I have a little bit of light, dim light in the bedroom, then it lessens the shock of that headlight. I'm able to sleep more comfortably and more fully by having a little bit of light in the bedroom. Otherwise, the bedroom is really dark because all the light sources are up here. And if a headlight comes, it's a little startling in sleep and can wake me up. I don't want to do that. So I mitigate that by putting a little dim light into the bedroom. We'll turn the lights back on. There we go. So what'd you think? Um, so 10 tips to street camping, urban camping, exploring an e a neighborhood in the evening, and then um, getting a good night's sleep to be rested enough for the next day to continue the adventure. What I want to do is run outside. I'm going to turn the light off in here and I'm going to show you what the rig looks like as best I can um, in a dark environment so you can see whether or not you can see in here. Clearly you can see the, the curtain here, right? Can't see anything from the window on the inside. Again, you can see the reflection. This is why I like to have street lights. Pretty heavy reflection there, right? Cannot see in. This gets a little more interesting. You can see the two front seats, right? Volta light, and there's the blue light in the back. But it kind of looks like you know, utility lights, not person reading in the bedroom lights. There's the bedroom window. And of course, with the covers being on, you can't see anything on the inside with those blinds up. Zoom out for you a little bit. So you're kind of getting the deal here. All right, bonus, bonus tip. And that is this, zoom back in for you. And that is, I do not spin the cab seats around during street camping experiences. Why? Yeah, I want to be able to drive away if I need to. And if my cab spun around, um, it's number one going to be quick to get a make a get getaway fast if I have to turn the seat around. Again, it's a giveaway that somebody's probably in the van. Obviously, nobody's going to drive a or, or you know, having a seat spun around kind of gives a clue somebody's inside. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed that video, but want to make one of these for you for a long time. And uh, if I'm up, if you got something out of it, comment below. Would you want to street camp? If you do, um, where are some cool neighborhoods that you've street camped? And, um, and as always, would be a pleasure to have you subscribe and be part of the success of this channel. So until we see you soon, I wish you to journey on and sleep well on the street.